Earlier this week, Alex Jones issued a warning that America is already technically at war with Russia. Well, now we are hearing that same warning coming from a top British general warning of nuclear war with Russia, saying the end of life could be as we know it upon us. This is senior British Army officer General Sir Richard Sheriff, and he warns that NATO faces nuclear war with Russia and Europe and that America is already technically at war with Russia. Of course, now just as echoing these cyber war uh, hearings that we're talking about. So he asserts that the West faces the biggest threat from Russia since the Cold War and that Putin plans to reestablish Russia's status as one of the world's greatest powers by marching into the Baltic states of Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia. Uh, he's also comparing the way the West policies toward Putin uh, to the appeasement of Hitler. He says Moscow may have already lit the fuse that could lead to the unthinkable nuclear war with Russia in Europe. And as we all know, our, under Article 5 of the Washington Treaty, an attack on one NATO member country represents an attack on all member countries, meaning the United States would be at war with Russia if Russian troops set foot in Baltic countries. So uh, Owen Schroyer joins me now. And here he's kind of saying, you know, it's not like they're, they're going to just kind of sit back. If, if this ramps up, Russia's going to release nukes, then the U.S. is going to release some nukes, and it's going to be mutually assured destruction. Well, we can all pray to God that nobody launches a nuke because that would obviously be disaster. The end or, of life as we know. Right, as the general said. But, you know, it's amazing. He talks about already being at war. You know, there may not be a physical war going on that people can actually see and experience and react to. But there is obviously a psychological war going on right, right now. There's obviously a war on reality. There's a war of rhetoric. Where who's to blame? If if all of this pops off, you know, Russia is going to be pointing fingers at the United States. The United States is going to be pointing fingers at Russia. And and at the end of it, we lose. The citizens of these countries are the ones that lose. So I would hope that just all of this coming out, people reporting on it, you know, it doesn't really reach the mainstream news like it does here at Infowars.com or Drudge or Breitbart or these other places. But if Americans can actually start to feel the threat of World War III, I think they might actually be more inclined to look at some serious issues moving forward on this election, right, well, especially we, when we talk about Clinton, who's poking the Russian bear. Yeah, and we really would like them to sort of tone down the rhetoric if they indeed don't really actually want to take us to war. It seems like they really do are pushing for World War III, or is it just more fear-mongering to help Hillary Clinton win the election? Well, it's funny because there's like a double cover-up going here where they want World War III because that covers up for the crimes that the Clintons have committed so they can just get away with those crimes. But then on the back end, talking about possibly hacking the election, mm -hmm. that is a cover up in case Trump wins. So they'll blame Russia for hacking if Trump wins. And if we do go to war and it's under the Clinton presidency, then we'll just completely ignore all the crimes of the Clinton Foundation and Hillary Clinton's time in the State Department. And that will be her get out of jail free card, essentially starting World War III. And we're already seeing it with her rhetoric. Right. And of course, now we have uh, Russia coming out, Putin saying, I don't I don't really know why they're talking like this. Uh, this is very dangerous rhetoric coming out of the, the United States. Uh, but honestly, like, how do we know if what he's saying to his own people is just propaganda that he's pushing out? Right. And that's a good point, And that's a fair point to make. So we try to look at this on an even playing field. So let's say that uh, perhaps Putin is just lying about all of this. And let's say that Putin really is trying to interfere with the U.S. elections. Well, OK, I'll tell you what. Why would Vladimir Putin want to interfere with these elections? He's already said we've already heard from Russia. If Hillary wins, that essentially equals war. Right. So if the Russian hackers are hacking the DNC and exposing co the corruption from the Clinton campaign in order to avoid World War III, I would be okay with that. Now, obviously, I'm not okay with Russia hacking our systems. Ultimately, that's probably not good for us. But if they're doing this to expose democratic corruption and hopefully not get Hillary Clinton in office to avoid World War III, why is that bad? Why are people freaking out over Russia hacking us instead of freaking out over the actual crimes we've seen committed by the Democratic Party? Right. And this is this is where they get me here. Hillary Clinton said this during the last debate. What's really important about WikiLeaks is that the Russian government has engaged in espionage against Americans. Well, how about 
what you've engaged in against Americans? How about what you've engaged in against Haitians? How about what you've engaged in against Libyans? But see, that's what the hacks are exposing. That's why she wants to demonize Russia instead of focusing on what the email leaks are actually exposing. Right, and uh, Vladimir Putin c came out and kind of addressed this directly. Let's take a listen. Maybe the only new thing is that this was said at such a high level. Not only did the U.S. admit to being involved in this, but they threatened with it. This, of course, is not on par with established standards for international communication. They must be a little nervous. The question is why. My point is, there are many unsolved problems. This is where the well-practiced system of distraction comes into play, to distract the voters from own country's problems. They create an enemy and unite the nation against them. But as I said in a different forum, it is unfortunate that in order to distract from internal problems, Relations with Russia are being put into jeopardy because it is, of course, harmful to international relations as a whole. And it is my hope that after these debates are over, after this challenging period in internal U.S. politics is over, there will be an opportunity to restore Russian-American relations. I'd like to calm everyone down, our American partners and friends. We have no intention of influencing the turn of events in the elections in the United States. Mrs. Clinton has chosen to take up a very aggressive stance against our country, against Russia. But Mr. Trump, on the other hand, calls for cooperation, at least when it comes to the international fight against terrorism. Naturally, we welcome those who would like to cooperate with us. And we consider it wrong, the notion that we always have to be in conflict with each other, thus creating existential threats for each other and for the whole world. So just like we're hearing again and again, it does not matter about the contents of the emails, all of the corruption and the collusion that has been revealed. It's just that we should all be afraid of the Russians. It's total madness. Well, and you can see from Putin's body language there and talking about this, he doesn't want to start this. He doesn't like attack like we see Hillary Clinton coming out when she starts pointing fingers and blaming Russia. But it is really strange, you know, obviously he's responding to the serious threat of cyber attacks uh, by Joe Biden, who apparently wants to do it secretly, even though he said this on national television. So I don't know what Putin really wants. I don't know what the Russians really want. But from where I'm standing, it feels like the Russians don't want World War III. And it seems like some of our political hacks that have been in power, like John Kerry and Joe Biden, do want World War III. For what reason? I don't know. Maybe they're just crazy. Yeah, we really don't know to what extremes they'll go to to push this narrative. Now, we had Colonel Tony Schaefer on the Alex Jones Show today, and here's what he had to say about the potential for World War III. I agree with General Dunford. Um, we, we have to understand, that General Dunford being the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, we have to understand a no-fly zone at this point in time would do nothing to help secure the situation and would likely lead to another war. And let's remember that General Dunford, during his confirmation hearings a year and a half ago, said in front of the Senate and got pilloried for it that he felt the, our largest threat uh, right now, globally, is not Islamic terror. It's actually the Russians, uh, the, because they had both the capability to do real damage with nuclear weapons, as well as compete with us in the world stage. So his words were, you know, literally by the left, kind of. Uh, uh, he was basically made into a, a, a caricature over that issue. Well, we know that the Russians are expanding, and they have clear designs on trying to reinsinuate themselves in places. So, but you have people like Hillary Clinton and others who really, I think, are looking to get us into the war because they are proposing these very antagonistic things, uh, very dangerous things, which would indeed uh, potentially get us into a shooting war with the Russians. And let me be clear for your audience. I don't believe 
uh, for a minute that we're ready to go to war with Russia. I don't think they want to go to war with with us. With that said, we are doing nothing uh, to actually effectively counter their re-expansion into the world as a global superpower. And the, with the way Hillary Clinton's proposing to do it, it would, would really simply put us in a position where we're not prepared to fight a war that we'd have to fight that would result in, I think, a great deal of, of, of bloodshed. So, you know, for those of the, the, the kids who are living in their parents' basements right now based on the really bad economy created by President Obama and Hillary Clinton, uh, they would be uh, basically allowed to be trained to be in the military and go fight a war they'd probably die in. So, you know, it's a good way of, of, of Hillary using the, 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 the millennials in a way to get, them, to get them to go to work, and I don't think it would be a good way to go to work. Exactly. And then we had a week and a half ago, uh, General Milley, the head of the Army, say this new war will be as big casualty wise as World War Two. I mean, this is just apocalyptic stuff we're hearing. Right. And General Milley is correct. I mean, I know General Milley. He is being completely accurate in his uh, his comments on the point. So so we have to take a step back. Uh, some of these things that are being proposed now may have worked before the Russians came in. Well, it's a completely different situation. And the other thing is this. Uh, you know, there's been reports of the uh, offensive in Mosul kicking off, and it is going as well as can be expected. Uh, I'm not saying it's going, you know, swimmingly well. There's challenges. You, we now have 100,000 troops. Not Most of those are not ours. We're probably Limited about, we're probably at about between 10 and 15,000, uh, probably just about 15% of that force is U.S. Fighting this uh, effort, uh, the Kurds, God bless them, uh, our primary ally doing a great job. The Iraqis doing a marginal job as they have been. But there is progress being made to, to, to move ISIS out of Mosul. Now, much like we've seen with the release of Hillary Clinton's emails, the establishment does not want you to pay any attention to the contents of the videos released by Project Veritas. This coming out of NBC News, they want you to know that the Trump Foundation paid $10,000 to Project Veritas in 2015, as if that matters. Uh, frankly, this makes me like Donald Trump even more, that he is supporting independent journalism and not in cahoots with NBC News and the Clinton News Network. So NBC News puts out this article showing, oh, here, look at his shows that he paid to Project Veritas. Trump has never said that he paid these filmmakers. And NBC News likes to point out that they have not corroborated the video. So they're not even reporting on the video or the contents in the video. They just want to let you know that, you know, there must be something behind it. You know, even though the video right there has these Democratic operatives telling you all you need to know if you would just watch it for yourself since the mainstream media is not going to report on it for you. Now, Joe Biggs is joining me in studio with some more news now, we know that Project Veritas has more to release, um, but obviously there's been some active threats being made against James O'Keefe. So what do you know? Yeah, so Project Veritas actually uh, hit me up this morning earlier, uh, spoke, on, spoke to him on the phone on and off throughout the day. And what they're saying is they've received some legitimate uh, threats. Now, James O'Keefe was actually thrown to the ground and had an FBI storm in. He's been to jail before. I mean, he's gone through this quite a bit. I mean... He's been a victim of the corrupt government coming out backlashes uh, whenever he exposes what's going on. You know, so there's legitimate threats happening right now, you know, and they're kind of wondering, are the feds going to come busting in their door at any time? Right. So that's why they've activated this dead man switch, so to say. And Alex has already announced today on the show, but we're going to have that key if something happens to James O'Keefe. Uh, over this weekend, before the video's release, he's going to have a part three. And the words from his team were, it's nuclear. You know, they handed at Hillary Clinton and Donna Brazell or whatever, the, the new head of the DNC. Uh, so those names were brought up in the conversation as well. So it's going to be exciting to see what's going to happen. You know, the first video he drops already got, what, 10 million views. It's talking about how the DNC paid these crazy people to come out and incite violence at Trump rallies. Mm -hmm. You know, something that we talked about on and off all the time. an election. Uh, I was at a Trump rally in Dallas a year ago, or no, this past summer in June, and I actually have a police officer on record, on tape, the right. Daily Caller did a report on it, saying that these guys had been bussed in, and that's what that video exposes, you know, so... You already know the DNC is willing to lie right. to get a narrative out about Donald Trump. Meanwhile, they're so willing to bet on people believing these fake trumped up charges about these women coming out. All of a sudden, right. all these women are coming out. Well, either way, James right. O'Keefe's going to come out with some bombshell stuff. You know, these right. guys are super excited. They said it's going to be nuclear. It's going to be the biggest thing. It's really going to pull that last pillar down on the corrupt government. 
Uh, I got an email from him, read over it. It looks amazing, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Right. And of course, now Donna Brazil has come out saying, oh, well, it's all been altered. It's hacked. We, you know, we were hacked by the Russians. No one should pay any attention to any of this stuff that's coming out. And it's just that's James O'Keefe on his Twitter was kind of alluding to, you know what, Donna, we've got something coming for you, too, by saying that this isn't real. You don't want to watch it. You don't want anyone to believe it. And it's pretty exciting that they would come to us because they know that InfoWars is going to play the videos in its entirety. We are not afraid of these people. The only thing we're afraid of is if they get their way. That's the only thing that we have to be scared of. So that's super exciting. And I know that you'll have more on that uh, as that information comes in. But that's why people, you know, got us have to come here because it is people like James O'Keefe. We're all in this together. We're all in good company. Well, as I get updates, I'm going to be tweeting them out on my account and then using Alex's account as well. So we'll have updates as they uh, they happen. And then we should be looking at that video dropping sometime the beginning of next week, maybe Monday, Tuesday, something like that. So everyone, fingers crossed, hopefully this will be the video that finally brings down mm -hmm. the corrupt Democrat Party and Hillary Clinton, because that's what we need. Mm, that's very exciting. Thank you, Joe Biggs. And thank you, all of you out there. We'll be waiting for that nuclear report coming from Project Veritas. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, October 21st, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Vladimir Putin responds to Joe Biden and Hillary Clinton and their stance and threats aimed at Russia. You can expect anything from our U.S. friends. And then... George Orwell's 1984 doublethink in the flesh, as Democrats and mainstream media say there is no election fraud, but that it's Russia's fault. Of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? It's comments like that that really worry people who understand the threats that we face. Meanwhile, Donald Trump skewers Hillary Clinton at last night's Al Smith charity dinner to the chagrin of many. Then this. James O'Keefe and Project Veritas are under fire as they are set to launch even more damning evidence against the corrupt Clinton campaign. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Well, a major distributed denial of service attack took place this morning, wiping out major websites like Twitter, uh, Reddit, Spotify. Users were not able to access these websites due to this massive hack attack. Um, now, this was an attack on a major DNS provider. So, of course, a lot of people were speculating, was this some type of a political conspiracy? Was it an attempt to take down the Internet so people wouldn't be able to read the Clinton emails on WikiLeaks? Um, other people, of course, are thinking, well, it's Russia. But again, it could have been our own government trying to give weight to the claim that Russia is trying to attack us by cyber war, that we're already in this cyber war. Who knows at this point? Uh, they are already prepping to get ahead of all of the election and voter fraud that's definitely set to take place this election cycle. Now, U.S. intelligence and law enforcement officials are warning that hackers with ties to Russia uh, and their intelligence services there could try to undermine the credibility of this presidential election by posting documents online purporting to show evidence of voter fraud. They're saying these hackers could post documents some of which might be falsified, that are designed to create public perceptions of widespread voter fraud. So they're already prepping for the inevitable. We already know there's going to be voter and election fraud. We're already starting to see those type of things. But they're trying to get out in front of it, saying it's the Russians. This is a very dangerous precedent that they're setting, that we don't even need to look into any of these claims because it's hackers or it's Russians. And the fact that a lot of people are concerned about the election being rigged and that they're getting out in front of it saying it's the Russians. But wait a minute, Obama said rigged election. What does that even mean? How could that even happen? He, he doubled down uh, saying that Donald Trump making these claims about a rigged system is actually dangerous. He says Donald Trump is dangerous for actually bringing this up. It undermines our democracy. He says it's more than just the usual standard lie. It's not a joking matter, and it's helping our enemies. You're sowing those seeds of doubt in other people's minds about the legitimacy of our elections. It undermines our democracy. What about your intelligence and law enforcement seeding people's minds with this conspiracy theory that the Russians are going to hack in and post uh, fake fraud, fraudulent documents that say that our election is hacked? I mean, 
On the one end, they're saying that Donald Trump is doing it when they themselves are pushing out the propaganda. Of course, Trump has said that he will accept a clear election result, but he reserves his right to contest in the case of a questionable result, which I think, you know, is a solid answer because we have seen evidence of this. He, <laughs> of course, they're making fun of him because he said, sure, I'll accept the results if I win. And now the establishment is in a total panic and they're all flurrying around. Oh, my goodness, Donald Trump said he wouldn't accept the results of the election. He said at, at the time during the debate, I'll tell you at the time, I'm going to keep you in suspense. And everyone's the chain reaction of, oh, it's horrifying. Trump won't say if he'll accept election results. Trump won't vow to honor the results. Why is the establishment in such hysteria? Well, Patrick J. Buchanan there at WND says, in a word, fear. The establishment is horrified at the Donald's defiance because deep within its soul, it fears that the people for whom Trump speaks no longer accept its political legitimacy or moral authority. Bingo. And they are absolutely right about that. This really could be the last election of this kind because the people are beginning to recognize what a rigged system looks like, thanks to WikiLeaks. And of course, now WikiLeaks um, really doubled down on the tweets there this uh, Thursday. They sent out several tweets in response to some criticism, basically saying, well, you guys are trying to throw the election. You've obviously picked your favorite. You're playing sides. And WikiLeaks was like, you're not a fan of publishing true information about corrupt ruling power factions who will take power on January 20th? What election? It has been clear from the beginning who is going to win. This is, in effect, a power consolidation exercise. So, of course, we put together a little video montage of all the times in the past that liberals themselves have talked about elections being rigged. I keep emphasizing it, Florida, the polls have closed. Florida goes for Al Gore. If we say somebody has carried a state, you can pretty much take it to the bank. Book it if that's true. Speaker of the House of Florida was Tom Feeney, one of my first introductions to him, and he wanted us to build a vote flipping software. It takes uh, it takes only a few seconds to insert a computer virus into this voting machine. I stand by. Uh, CNN right now is moving our earlier declaration of Florida back to the too close to call column of asking the Attorney General to pursue criminal and civil actions against Diebold in this matter based on findings of fraudulent actions. You didn't have to sit across the street in a truck. You could just sit there and punch a button and the votes all flip. George Bush is the president-elect of the United States. He has won the state of Florida according to our projections. The effort I have underway is simply to make sure uh, that, that all the votes are counted. Our, our presidential election came down to one state where the brother of the man running for president was the governor of the state. Here's my point. According to the Washington Post, early evening exit polls pointed to a decisive win for Kerry. Apparently what has happened is that the Associated Press, they were feeding numbers into us and then suddenly those numbers changed. First of all, we want to find out what happened. The leaked data revealed that in critical states, Kerry was ahead in the exit polls in 10 of the 12 swing states. What I'm telling you is that uh, the numbers changed and sometimes these things happen. And hundreds of thousands of votes shift, not in a <laughs> progressive, incremental way, but in this almost complete, sudden, violent reversal. This last Friday night, I, I arranged to meet Senator Kerry at a fundraiser to give him a copy of my book. He told me he now thinks the election was stolen. He said he doesn't believe that he's the person who can go out front on the issue because of the sour grapes, uh, you know, question. But he said he believes it was stolen. Uh, he says he argues about this with his Democratic colleagues on the Hill. He had just had a big fight with Christopher Dodd about it because he said, you know, there's this stuff about the voting machines. They're really questionable. And Dodd was angry. He, I don't want to hear about it. You know, I've looked into it. There's nothing there. Well, there's, there's plenty there. I raise this objection because I am convinced that we as a body must conduct a formal and legitimate debate about election irregularities. 
I raise this objection to debate the process and protect the integrity of the true will of the people. So we do move into the 2008 election cycle with many of the same problems that we had going all the way back to 2000 and the fiasco in Florida. Some electronic voting machines in West Virginia were selecting McCain when voters actually punched Obama. Yep. Smartmatic and other voting machine companies are private companies. They have proprietary software that can call a trade secret. Even the New York Times indicated last week that over 30% of the ACORN registrations are bogus, fraud, fraud or fake. And that should be disconcerting to anyone who cares about free and fair elections. All right. The so concern you're... is that these fraudulent registrations are going to lead to fraudulent voting. And in a close race, whether it be in Ohio or Nevada or elsewhere, uh, this is where this acorn scandal, I think, is going to be have a potentially explosive impact on election day. All right, I want But of most concern, of course, are the separate computer systems that count and report actual votes. So far, no sign that any of those have been compromised. Lapel conducted a demonstration where he actually changed the votes in the machine by swapping out the machine's computer chip for one that he programmed. This black box is an unaccountable, untestable, privately run software from the two companies that you have hired to count our votes. So when the votes come out of this black box, they do not reflect the New York City or the national votes. In 22 primaries, the votes have shifted in 20 of them. The exit polling data in New York State shifted 12%. A shift of 2% is fraud. According to the U.S. State Department, so that's what we've seen across the country. I figured out how to make a slightly different computer program that just before the close of the polls, it shifts some votes around from one candidate to another. The work we did to prepare for Hillary Clinton to be our nominee and then make sure that we could get her elected president is, uh, is absolutely critical to advancing well, the issues. Of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? <laughs> Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the Internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to Infowars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. Infowars Live available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You going to sit down and play games and be a trendy or are you going to be part of history? Don't sit by and let the Internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action. Well, a review of Hillary Clinton's public and private emails made public by WikiLeaks, I might add. They revealed the name George Soros in them 60 times so far. And we know that Clinton, she's very much absorbed in Soros's plan, his open society, his no border policy, if you will, regarding the United States. And this echoes a sentiment that Soros made in 1999 regarding American exceptionalism. He clearly doesn't agree with that concept. And he says the sovereignty of states must be subordinated to international law and international institutions. So we know that a vote for Hillary Clinton is going to equal a vote for George Soros. Now, the Clinton-Soros symbiosis, it can, it's come into focus more clearly this, this month with the WikiLeaks revelation. Thousands of hacks emails from John Podesta, Clinton's campaign chairman, and Soros's name comes up dozens and dozens of times. We know this, this piece done by the Washington Times yesterday. And it details how Soros, his radical vision of open borders, Hillary Clinton is going to embrace it full force, you can rest assured. And she's made comments to that effect over the past few years. She claims to be pro-American, anti-bad trade deals, anti-immigration policies that would harm us as a nation. But yet she's full force in her private life and her private emails. This is what she said to a group of bankers in Brazil. She says, my dream is a hemispheric common market with open trade and open borders. This was, of course, to a closed-door audience in 2013. And we know that Soros is a major funder of Clinton, $11 million to her campaign and her PACs alone. We also know that she shares his vision for how the U.S. should look.
um, the globalist structure of our economy where we're not even, you know, operating in, in, in the way that we operate any longer. He's also a proponent, and she echoes this, of, of bringing in a mass flood of unvetted refugees. And in part, we know this because it changes the, the, the civilization, if you will. He doesn't agree with our American exceptionalism, and the one way to change it is to mass migrate populations in droves, specifically uh, militant men of militant age, which is exactly what they've done in Western Europe. And it's absolutely her plan that she echoes because of Soros, her BFF, somebody who's donated literally millions to her, millions to her campaign and millions to her foundation. Now, the global charity that the Clintons set up, it's proved to be a good networking tool. And this article details this to obtain uh, paid speaking engagements, as we know. And all of this money that she's taking in, she's using it uh, to her own benefit. This was pointed out in the debate of which she, of course, immediately changed. And uh, when she was questioned over her immigration stance, specifically, she went on some tirade about Russia that had nothing to do, very unsuccessfully pivoting. But I want to make this clear that a vote for Clinton, it's absolutely a vote for George Soros, number one globalist in chief who is anti-American. He's anti our economy. He's anti our civilization. If he has his way, we're going to look a lot like Western Europe does right now, even worse. And I can tell you that Clinton, she echoes this in these emails. The, the Washington Times has highlighted this beautifully. Check it out. Take a look. I'm Margaret Howe reporting for Infowars.com. The Al Smith Dinner, hosted by the Archbishop of New York, is an annual gathering of elites for Catholic charities supporting needy children held at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in New York on the third Thursday of October. The event honors former New York Governor Al Smith, the first Catholic presidential candidate. Ceremonially, it is the last event at which the two U.S. presidential candidates share a stage before the election. In the past, the event has been an occasion for American power brokers to rub elbows with their political pawns. It's distinguished dais, or better known as the top 1%. <laughs> Thank you all very much. This is an impressive crowd, the haves and the have-mores. <laughs> of course, rules of fairness have to be enforced because uh, what other safeguard do we have besides the press? And uh... But this election year, being one of the strangest on record, presented yet another opportunity for Donald Trump to hold no quarter against Hillary Clinton. It's great to be here with a thousand wonderful people, or as I call it, a small, intimate dinner with some friends. Or as Hillary calls it, her largest crowd of the season. <laughs> we have proven that we can actually be civil to each other. In fact, just before taking the dais, Hillary accidentally bumped into me and she very civilly said, pardon me. And I very politely replied, let me talk to you about that after I get into office. <laughs> and I've known Hillary for a long time. This is the first time ever, ever, that Hillary is sitting down and speaking to major corporate leaders and not getting paid for it. <laughs> At the chance to meet the people who are working so hard to get her elected. There they are, the heads of NBC, <laughs> CNN, CBS, ABC, there's the New York Times right over there, and the Washington Post. Now I'm told Hillary went to confession before tonight's event, but the priest was having a hard time when he asked her about her sins and she said she couldn't remember 39 times. <laughs> nah. Hillary is so corrupt. She got kicked off the Watergate Commission. How 
corrupt you have to be to get kicked off the Watergate Commission. Pretty corrupt. Hillary is and has been in politics since the 70s. What's her pitch? The economy is busted. The government's corrupt. Washington is failing. Vote for me. I've been working on these problems for 30 years. I can fix it, she says. I wasn't really sure if Hillary was going to be here tonight because I guess you didn't send her invitation by email. Or maybe you did and she just found out about it through the wonder of WikiLeaks. We've learned so much from WikiLeaks. For example, Hillary believes that it's vital to deceive the people by having one public policy and a totally different policy in private. That's okay. I don't know who they're angry at, Hillary, you or I. For example, here she is tonight in public pretending not to hate Catholics. <laughs> now, if some of you haven't noticed, Hillary isn't laughing as much as the rest of us. That's because she knows the jokes. And all of the jokes were given to her in advance of the dinner by Donna Brazil, which is, everyone knows of course, Hillary's belief that it takes a village, which only makes sense after all in places like Haiti, where she's taken a number of them. Thank you. I don't know, and I don't want this evening without saying something nice about my opponent. Hillary's been in Washington a long time. She knows a lot about how government works. And according to her sworn testimony, Hillary has forgotten more things than most of us will ever, ever know. That I can tell you. Of course, the media will spin this with the intent of containing Trump's populist message while simultaneously falling on their own sword. Truth be told, this is only the beginning. Whatever the outcome of the presidential election, the Clinton crime family will ultimately have to answer to the veracity growing within the American consciousness. John Bound for Infowars.com. Welcome back to the Infowars Nightly News. And as we've covered before tonight, James O'Keefe is under fire. And he's already been under attack from the mainstream media, but perhaps now under threat from other entities. We're going to keep you posted on that. But as I said, the mainstream media has been in all out attack mode against James O'Keefe. Here's a video I shot responding to CNN attacking James O'Keefe. Owen Schroyer for Infowars.com. Now, when I first stumbled upon this video, it was the chanting of lock her up behind the CNN set that attracted me to it. But when I went and I listened to the whole segment, I couldn't help myself but have to respond to some of these CNN knuckleheads. So let's go ahead and roll the first video. Project Veritas, brainchild of James O'Keefe, who's got a less than stellar reputation for accuracy. Less than stellar reputation for accuracy. Hmm. Let's see. James O'Keefe is not the one going on news every day pontificating on things like you, Anderson Cooper. No, he has raw footage, undercover footage of actual people that is undoctored. So let's just be perfectly clear. This has nothing to do with how accurate or inaccurate James O'Keefe reporting is. This is just actual raw footage. So I just wanted to clarify the record on that, Anderson. Let's roll to the next one. The undercover videos produced by discredited conservative activist James O'Keefe. Discredited, discredited. I discredit you. You have been discredited by CNN. You have no credit. Discredited. You are discredited. Did you hear that? CNN just discredits James O'Keefe. They don't provide any evidence. They don't provide any proof. They just say you are discredited. That's what they do now in the news. They just say you're discredited and then you're discredited and then the brainwashed sheep will believe it. Let's roll to the next one, discredited. 
Scott Fovel, a subcontractor for a DNC-hired firm called Democracy Partners, supposedly explains just how he does it. Supposedly. He supposedly claims how he does it. <laughs> no, we caught him on tape explaining how he does it. I don't know where you get supposedly in that, but I guess this is just you trying to distract from the truth. Let's roll to the next one. Both the DNC and the Clinton campaign deny any coordination with anything involving the incitement of violence. Kramer himself told CNN his former contractors were committing barroom talk, insisting none of what is being described by Fovel ever actually happened. Discredit, discredit, deny, deny, deny. And then they use the old locker room talk. Wait a second. When Trump refers to locker room talk, oh, how dare he, locker room talk, yeah, right, locker room talk. And then we catch the Democratic Party engaging in voter fraud and inciting violence, but then it's okay to just say that's locker room talk. Give me a break. Let's roll to the next one. Kramer writes, we regret the unprofessional and careless hypothetical conversations that were captured on hidden cameras of a regional contractor for our firm. He is no longer working with us. Isn't that great? They discredit, they deny, they say it's not true, none of it exists, it's all alleged, supposedly. Oh, but, but he's got to go. Kramer and Fogel, sorry, all of this alleged activity, but you guys still got to go. I wonder how alleged it really is when you're losing your job over it. Let's roll to the next one. What's the DNC doing about this? First, they put out a statement saying, Anderson, there's no evidence that anything described on these tapes actually took place. They agree with Bob Kramer's decision to step away and separate from any work. Yeah, again, well, we deny that any of this actually happened, but, well, Bob Kramer's got to step down. Even though none of it happened and it's all supposedly discredited, Bob Kramer still has to step down. Discredit, deny, step down. Roll the next one. So going to investigate, they say, James O'Keefe to find out if he did anything illegal. Right. Let's investigate James O'Keefe to see if he did anything illegal. Let's not investigate the mass voter fraud that might be exposed here. Let's not investigate the inciting of riot and mob violence that might be exposed here. No, 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 no. Let's investigate James O'Keefe. But I'll tell you what, from both sides of the issue, where's the FBI? The FBI's nowhere. Where are you, James Comey? You got nothing on any of this? You got nothing on O'Keefe, which the left once investigated, but then you've also got nothing on potential voter fraud and inciting riots. Where is the FBI? That is a total joke. James Comey is the leader of the FBI. What a shill. Let's roll to the next one. And we don't know how big a deal it is. It's just more uh, garbage in what's been a very ugly and divisive campaign. We don't know whether this was locker room talk. Oh, Gloria Berger, using locker room talk. She, you know, she discredits Donald Trump when he says locker room talk. But then she'll use locker room talk to try to act like these videos released by James O'Keefe are just garbage. She says it's just garbage. We don't know anything. This is just garbage. Give me a break, Gloria. Let's roll to the next one. Psychiatrist office and this kind of thing. I mean, this is not acceptable Info in American wars. politics. Yeah. I mean, this is totally unacceptable. All right, so you may have just heard this. So this clip that we just played, Jeffrey Lord is talking about how the stuff that is exposed in the James O'Keefe videos are unacceptable. And then out of nowhere, Gloria just says Infowars.com. She just says it. It was very strange. I've never seen anything like this. Lord is just talking, no mention of Infowars, no mention of anything like that. And then she just says, Infowars. I mean, what is wrong with you, Gloria? You got some serious issues. Let's roll to the next one. I do think we have to underscore, though, the fact that James O'Keefe has zero credibility in this area. He's a, he's a criminal, right? And so I think that, oh, yes, we have, we have to look into it. Zero credibility. He's a criminal. And you know what, Maria? You provided zero evidence at all. You are the epitome of CNN. You are the one that is discredited. Let's roll to the next one. You know, none of this actually happened. The DNC says none of it actually happened. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. The DNC said none of it ever happened. Oh, my God. Wait, CNN said none, none of it ever happened? Well, then it's discredited. It's discredited. Roll to the next one. The other is a conspiracy to rig an election. Um, now, I would take that much more seriously if it didn't come from Pinocchio. <laughs> 
Oh, great point, Van Jones. Excellent point. But you know what? Regardless of where it comes from, regardless if it's a Russian hack, regardless if it's WikiLeaks, regardless if it's Project Veritas, regardless if it's InfoWars, regardless if it's Matt Drudge, why aren't people investigating this stuff? They want to kill the messenger instead of actually looking in to what the messenger is trying to tell them, which is just absolute veritas. Now, this was the bread and butter, folks. This is what I actually went to look at this segment to find the crowd behind the CNN set chanting, lock her up. Van Jones can't handle it. Let's see the bread and butter. So, uh, that, so, so here's the deal. Um, I think that the fact that this comes from O'Keefe is a reason to withhold judgment. Um, you, you get, you get, Look at that. I got to congratulate all the info warriors, all the great Americans out there chanting lock her up right behind the live set of CNN. And Van Jones was clearly triggered in that video. He was stumbling all over himself like a fumbling, bumbling Barack Obama who he used to work for. So there you go, CNN. Nice try. But you are the ones that are discredited. This has been Owen Troyer for Infowars.com. So, folks, as you can see, Mainstream media lapdogs are going after James O'Keefe relentlessly with very little substantial evidence that can actually bring him down as the discredited journalist that they all claim that he is. And it's funny because, again, they want you to believe all of these charges against Donald Trump. They want you to believe he's touching all of these women, he's doing all this crazy stuff, but then provide no evidence. They try to frame him with a tape which he says is locker room talk, and then all of these false allegations, many of them debunked, and then on the opposite side of the spectrum, when their side is caught doing dirty deeds, they say that, oh, that's just locker room talk. So we're not supposed to believe James O'Keefe, who has verified, documented evidence to back up his claims, but we are supposed to believe all of these women coming out of the woodworks claiming that Donald Trump touched them in an inappropriate manner years and years ago as if they just now want to say to the world that donald trump is some sort of inappropriate womanizer yeah right just in front of the presidential election i don't think that i'm buying that but we'll find out what does the american people believe in do they believe in james o'keefe actual videos do they believe in james o'keefe as a true individual or do they believe all the mainstream media lies that are nothing more than propaganda against donald trump thanks to everybody who tuned into the nightly news tonight we hope you have a great weekend please visit infowarsstore.com this has been owen troyer thanks to leanne McAdoo for hosting we'll be back monday seven o'clock central